All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check the video out. I really do appreciate all of the continued support. In this video, we're going to be talking about PlayStation and what they should do next now that Activision Blizzard is apparently going to be acquired by Microsoft. This was the massive announcement that happened earlier this week, and this is coming right off of finding out that Bethesda is now officially part of Microsoft. So that's two major video game publishers bought up by Microsoft like it was absolutely nothing. And, you know, understandably, a lot of Xbox fans are feeling excited and a lot of gamers are uh, happy about, you know, the type of deal they're going to get with something like Game Pass. And that's all fine and well, but there are other aspects to this that people are not so happy about. It's very clear at this point that the gaming industry is consolidating and, there are a multitude of reasons why this can be a very bad, negative, and detrimental thing. We're not necessarily going to dive into those reasons within this video because I do just want to remain focused on PlayStation, but that is the current reality of the situation, and I think at this point, there's no denying that. We have major corporations like Microsoft, but others as well, such as Tencent, Google, Amazon, even Netflix, you know, all of these companies that want to get involved in gaming and even Microsoft themselves, they're coming out here saying that one of the reasons why they're doing this is because they want to get these publishers before other corporations are able to do so, such as, again, Tencent, Google, etc. And so we have to kind of ask ourselves, you know, where does PlayStation fall with all of this, right? Where do they land? I mean, there's no doubt that things are rapidly changing. They're going to continue to rapidly change and i've been wrong about quite a few of my predictions when it comes to playstation things that they will do things that they won't do and what i've learned over the years is that at this point it's pretty much impossible for me anyway to predict playstation because there's no telling what they're going to do so what i figured i could do is talk to you guys about what i think playstation should do now i think that there are some things here that I'm going to discuss that they absolutely will do. It just is the next logical thing for them to do or the most logical thing for them to do. But there are gonna be other things that are up in the air. I'm not Sony, right? I'm not an executive within Sony. I don't know what the conversations at Sony have been like the past week. I can only assume that there's a lot being discussed right now and we don't really know what's gonna happen going forward within the gaming industry. What we do know is that PlayStation plays a vital role within the gaming industry. And even though PlayStation has kind of been at the top spot for a long time now, it feels like when things do change, you know, it's one of these things where is Sony gonna kind of continue to do what they've done or are they going to also change and adapt rapidly to everyone and everything else? But what I do believe wholeheartedly Sony should be laser focused on more than anything. And this is truly my belief. Again, I'm not saying that anybody else has to feel this way. This is just how I feel. I think Sony absolutely needs to stay laser focused on quality. Not just the quality of their games. I mean, that's a given. But just the quality of the PlayStation brand as a whole. This goes for games the development teams, their partnerships, their messaging, uh, their services, just everything that they do, I feel like should revolve around that one word, that being quality. Because when you think about what PlayStation does best, their greatest strength, again, this is all my opinion, but I think you know people would agree with this, it's really the quality of what they offer. It's the quality of what they do. And I feel like in 2021, we saw Sony very clearly, you know, double down on this in an area where we really haven't seen them do much in a long time, that being acquiring studios, acquiring new talent. And it was very clearly a response to the announcement that Microsoft was acquiring Bethesda. After that announcement happened, within a year, we saw Sony acquire about five studios and that's more than Sony acquired in the last decade. So clearly Sony feels the urge to do something, the need to do something, which they should, 
but they're not just going out there and doing what I think some people assume they would, which is, okay, now we're going to go try to acquire a big publisher ourselves. There's no doubt that there are some video game publishers that Sony could afford if they really wanted to, but that's just it. I don't know that Sony wants to do that, at least not yet. I say this because not only do we not know if that's the right answer for Sony, but we also don't know what is and what is not possible for Sony. Only Sony knows that, right? And so what we do know for sure is that more and more gaming publishers will be bought up over time. I feel like that's just an inevitability at this point. It might not be, and I think a lot of people will hold out hope that that's not going to be what happens next, but it feels like a new precedent has been set with the acquisition of Bethesda, as well as especially Activision Blizzard. It just really feels like at this point, you know, the floodgates are open, right? And this is where I don't know if Sony should necessarily acquire a big publisher. A lot of people think that Sony should, you know, be talking to Square Enix right now. Maybe Capcom, Konami, Sega possibly, maybe some others. But I just don't know that that's the right answer for Sony. But what I do know is that if somebody else ends up talking to one of these publishers, right, somebody that's not Sony, whether it be Microsoft or any other company that I mentioned, that is certainly something that at this point will really begin to hurt PlayStation, I believe. There's no doubt that if in the end, you know, games like Call of Duty and every other Activision Blizzard title alongside every Bethesda title, they just no longer exist on PlayStation, that hurts Sony tremendously. It may not hurt every PlayStation player. There are plenty of PlayStation players who just do not play Bethesda games or Activision Blizzard games, and they're fine. You know, they've dodged this bullet, I guess you could say. But, you know, knowing that this is, again, the precedent that's been set and it's going to continue to happen uh, potentially at a more rapid rate, this is something Sony does have to contend with. This is absolutely, I think, the biggest concern within PlayStation right now. I said earlier that Sony needs to absolutely focus on quality, and I mean that. I do mean that. I don't necessarily want Sony to get caught up in this arms race of, okay, well, we have to react to this, and we have to react to that, and we have to go out there and buy them and try to buy these guys. I don't necessarily want to see Sony do that because I just feel like that doesn't fall in line with what Sony does best. I feel like Sony does, uh, you know, strategic acquisitions. And when it comes to their games, they, again, they give developers the time they need. They're focused on the quality of the development teams that are there. They focus on putting the development teams first and the health of the developers first. So that way they can get a better result in the end you know, these are all things that Sony does prioritize. We are literally seeing that right in front of us with an upcoming game like Horizon Forbidden West and, you know, eventually when we get God of War Ragnarok. And, you know, there have been other plenty of titles we've gotten uh, up to this point that also prove this. So, I again, I, I think that the number one thing Sony needs to remain laser-focused on is the quality. But at this point, I'm just not convinced that Sony shouldn't do something more because I've noticed that with a lot of core PlayStation fans, a lot of uh, you guys who are here, you know, uh, engaging with the channel, which thank you so much. I appreciate that. There is this sentiment that Sony, they don't have to worry about anything. They're good. If they just keep doing what they're doing, they'll be fine. And I want to say just from a personal standpoint, I get that. I really do, because I, just like many of you, have really genuinely enjoyed what Sony has done with their IP, with the creation of new IP, with their development studios, with their partnerships, right? I've really enjoyed all of this, but I, at this point, can no longer say with 100% confidence that Sony shouldn't be worried. And I also cannot say with 100% confidence that PlayStation fans shouldn't be worried at all. And the reason for that is what I alluded to earlier. The idea that going forward, 
if you are somebody who bought a PS5 or you play on PlayStation 4 and you're hoping to get a PS5 and this is just where you play your games, it's where you have always played your games and you have no intention to move anywhere else to go enjoy your games, the last thing we want to see is the continuation of what we're already seeing and that is just more and more and more games that were once third party that were always available on PlayStation just stripped away and taken away and this is where Sony I do believe has no choice but to get aggressive now if they will remains to be seen but this surely is something where Sony at this point has to feel a sense of like like they have to enter this protective mode now where yes we can sit here and we can say well hey Sony has their own studios and nobody can take that away from them. They have their own IP. Absolutely. And there's no limit to how many new IP that these studios can create. We know that Sony has a lot of strong partnerships that have been built over years and years and years. But again, we have to understand what Sony is dealing with here. They're not dealing with, oh, well, they, you know, Microsoft got this title as a timed exclusive. So, you know, it's upsetting and, you know, PlayStation players are going to have to wait a year to play it. No, that's that's not what we're dealing with here. You know, we're not dealing with, oh, look at this new IP that was created from, uh, you know, Microsoft Studios or, you know, somebody else, whatever it may be, that, wow, we, we wish we would have done that, you know, or, you know, we wish we could have that game. It's It's far beyond that at this point. We are dealing with a company that just comes in one day and drops $68 billion. And believe me when I tell you, that is an unfathomable amount of money. They just drop it like it's nothing. And just like that, now PlayStation players have to sit here alongside, you know, Nintendo players as well and ask ourselves, is this going to keep happening? Because if so, PlayStation players have no choice but to look at Sony and, and say to them, you got to do something that maybe not necessarily stop this. Because, again, I don't think Sony can stop this. I think that this is just what's happening in the gaming industry, and no one can stop it. And so the only thing left to do is to embrace it, I guess you could say. I'm, you know, as crappy as that sounds, I think that is the brutal truth. And fans are going to have to start looking at Sony and saying, well, what are you going to do? you got to do something. And the best I think Sony could do is mitigate the potential damage that could be done. And the reality of that right now, I think for Sony, obviously comes down to doing what they've been doing with their studios, continuing to pursue individual studio acquisitions, smaller acquisitions, you know, more strategic, precise acquisitions where it's like, we can grow these teams, they have a ton of potential. And, you know, when we're 10 years into the future, this team we bought that was very small and not, it wasn't really looked at as the biggest acquisition at the time, they're as big as Sucker Punch or Gorilla or, you know, Insomniac at this point, right? Even looking at Insomniac games, acquisitions like this. And I know, I, I know that there are going to be a lot of PlayStation fans and just a lot of gamers in general who are going to push back against this notion. We're going to say, no, 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 Sony shouldn't go out there and try to get any publishers or anything like that. But I really have to continue to remind people that if you don't want to go play over on Xbox, and if you don't want to see Google have some type of massive leverage because they bought a major publisher themselves and now Google owns this publisher, whatever it may be, or Amazon or whatever it may be, then you do really kind of have to worry about whether or not this is what Sony will plan to do to mitigate this problem. Because make no mistake about it, this is a problem for PlayStation players. Again, right now, for all the PlayStation players, are like Activision Blizzard, couldn't care less. Bethesda, couldn't care less. These are not my types of games. I totally get that. I'm pretty much in the same boat. But what happens when it is a publisher you care about? What happens when it is a set of IP that you care about? And I know some people are going to think, MBG, you're just fear-mongering here. I'm not trying to do that because... The reality of the situation is I'm in the same boat as you guys. 
I am. Like, I don't know what Sony's going to do. What I do know is that if I found out somebody, uh, if so, if Capcom was going to be acquired at some point, I'll tell you right now, it would be devastating if it wasn't Sony. If whoever acquired Capcom, it's not Sony, that means suddenly, more than likely, well, no more Capcom games on the PlayStation platform, right? What if it's Square Enix? What if it's Konami? What if it's Take-Two Interactive? What if it's Ubisoft? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? I know it sounds to a lot of people like, oh, that's not going to happen. But last I checked, you know, a couple weeks ago, I'm pretty sure most people would have said there's no way Activision Blizzard is going to be acquired. There's just no way. And yet here we are. So, you know, this is just a conversation I wanted to have. I, I want to make one thing clear, though, too, at the end here, because, again, I know not everybody's going to agree with me. I, I want to make it known that for me, more than anything more than anything i want sony to focus on the quality because at the end of the day if it does turn out that sony in the long run ends up like nintendo where pretty much people who go to playstation are going to playstation for their exclusive titles and their first party titles that matters to me more than anything else but i cannot sit here and make it sound like i don't play every multi-platform third-party game on my playstation because i do so I can't confidently say that, oh, I'd be totally cool if in the long run, like 10 or 15 years from now, basically Sony doesn't have any more third-party games. No, that would be devastating to me. I think that'd be devastating to pretty much every PlayStation player. You know, I think that Nintendo is a little bit different because a lot of Nintendo players kind of got used to not getting third-party games, or at least not anywhere near to the extent that you would expect to see on PlayStation, PC, or Xbox. And that is where things, I think, get really hairy for Sony uh, based on, again, what's being set down right now. And so we're going to have to see. We're going to have to see what ends up happening. But, um, you know, just to sum up the video, Sony needs to stay laser focused on quality, which I have no doubt they will do. They absolutely will and do need to continue to acquire individual studios that seem like they're very talented and have a lot of potential. I think Sony is obviously going to continue to build on their services. How far this goes remains to be seen, but that will obviously continue to help them out. They need to continue with their partnerships and their deals and the timed exclusivity. You know, this is all stuff that I know people are going to be like, oh, I hate timed exclusives. It's necessary now more than ever for Sony. Uh, they need to keep making more contracts, more agreements. But I have to say, I do believe at this point that Sony has to go further than that. I don't think they have a choice. Whether you love that, whether you hate that, I don't think that matters. I think it's just actually at this point a need for Sony and the PlayStation brand. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, turned out a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I thought it would make for a very interesting conversation. I feel like we've, you know, you had my initial instinctive reaction with the live stream and we've been focused on the things that have you know, that are being said by Sony and Microsoft, but I just kind of wanted to talk directly to you guys and give you my thoughts on what I think is uh, potentially going to happen going forward. So at this point, I'm going to ask you to leave your thoughts down in the comments below. I will be very interested to hear what you guys have to say. Again, leave the video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new, hit the bell notification icon, and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.